What do I pack for winter backpacking trips? Let's talk about that. Hey guys, it's Mark and you're watching Mark Goes Hiking. So today what I want to do is share with you what I put in my backpack for winter backpacking trips. And most of my winter backpacking trips are over the weekend. So it's a Friday late afternoon till Sunday early afternoon. And what I pack in the winter is different than what I pack in the summertime, not just clothes wise, but also gear wise. So today I want to walk through my gear just a little bit and share with you what my winter gear loadout looks like. And I also would like to highlight the backpack that I'm using for my winter trips and my summer trips coming up in 2020. All right, guys. So first of all, just a, a brief introduction to the pack that I will be using. This is my Deuter Speedlight 26. It's not a big bag at all. Uh, you can see just the dimensions of it looking at it. Um, I managed to fit all of my winter backpacking gear in here for a weekend trip. Um, I don't think I could take it for uh, an extra day. I'm really maxed out in this thing. This thing is really packed. Um, it's got all my food in here. The only thing I don't have in this pack right now is my water, but there are two elastic side pockets uh, on this pack for water bottles. And I could probably put a liter on each side. Most likely though, for where I go for weekend trips, two 750 milliliter smart water bottles will do the trick. Um, so everything that I'm going to need for my weekend backpacking trip, including food, is in this pack and fuel. Only thing missing is water. And I just weighed this thing out. My complete pack minus water, including food and fuel, I'm at 12 pounds, 11 ounces. So add somewhere between probably four and five pounds. Um, and that's going to be my weekend loadout. So not bad at all. So what I want to do here is just walk through uh, what I have in the pack. Um, so first, as I said, let's talk about the pack itself. That's a 26 liter pack. Uh, it's got a little bit of an internal frame. I think it's a Y frame inside. Um, it's a poly mid, so the, the uh, material it's made with, it's not real stretchy, but it is a little elastic. So it allows me to pack all of my winter gear in here. Uh, and it just stretches just enough where I can really shove everything in real nicely. I don't like a lot of bells and whistles on bags, uh, but it does have some little um, little mollies on here that you could attach some things. Uh, it actually has a, a contraption on here or a setup where you can actually put an ice axe. I'm not going to be using that, but it's got the front pocket, which I really like a lot. I actually have my puffy coat in here, um, my tent stakes, and my poles. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, and then it's got the brain up here as well. Um, I don't know if I really like the brains too much on backpacks. I am considering looking at bags that just have the roll top. I really like that concept. I've never used it. But I do think this is actually a very affordable option uh, when looking at a pack that's a, a little smaller, a little tighter with the, front, um, with the front pocket on them. This bag you can get in most sporting goods stores or order through REI for around $120. However, if you do go on Amazon, you can find them right now for like 80 bucks. So this is a really economical way to get into a good smaller pack. Um, and a couple of other nice things I like about this, it's got padded straps um, and they're nice and padded. It's got the uh, adjusted load adjusting straps up here. Uh, it does have the one inch hip belt and it does have some small compartments as well on the hip belt. Let's actually get into the pack and uh, I'll show you what's all in there. All right, everyone. So the first thing I want to show you about my pack is one of the components that uh, I'm using to replace my headlamp. So I'm going to be using my cell phone for light. And then I also have one of these, just these little push button lights. Um, and I use those in my tent. It's just, you get that at any Home Depot or Lowe's. They're just a few bucks. It puts off just enough light in your tent uh, to just see what you're doing if you want a little light in the middle of the night or as you're getting into your tent. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna open up the brain of my pack and we'll get into uh, what's in there. So what I keep in here are my, um, you know, the duty tickets. 
And secondly, uh, it's just this is from an actual towel that I bought at one of our grocery stores. And I took the towel out because that was one of the first things I bought when I got into backpacking and really never used. So in this little bag uh, that I keep in the brain of my pack, I've got some line to hang my, um, my food at night. And then I also keep uh, my items for water filtration. In an upcoming video, I'll talk about filtering water and how I do my water filtration because it requires an extra step than most people because I'm paranoid about parasites. So I do have my Sawyer Squeeze and I also do have one of the UV filters as well. So I'll talk about that in another video. Um, also in here, what I keep, this is just a me thing. I know it's stupid. This is my novelty item. This makes me feel better about myself. I keep just a little thing of deodorant. It's one of the real stinky ones too. It's actually Axe. It's awful. I would never wear this on a day-to-day -day basis, but man, there's something about just freshening up a little bit in the morning. It's the dumbest thing. I know. Pick on me all you want in the comments. I embrace, I, I do stink, but there's something about just putting this on in the morning that kind of makes me feel better about myself. So, sorry guys, kind of kind of that way. Um, and then I do have a first aid kit, just a kit that I have a lot packed into. Maybe I'll do a video on that later, I don't know. All right, last thing in here, toothbrush with a little itty bitty tube of toothpaste. So that works great. That's lasted me a long time and I'm still using it. Um, that's it for in there. Okay. The other thing I keep in my brain is this is actually my new CNOC um, bladder bag. So I had a bladder bag before and it was just time to get another one and really like these a lot. They work great. I'll talk about this again, of course, when I do a video for water filtration. So more on that to come, but that is the two liter CNOC. All right. So that is it for the brain of my pack. So now I want to talk about what's in the front pocket of my pack. You can actually fit a lot into this thing. Um, so that's an advantage of this. It's not super stretchy, but it is enough to get uh, a good amount of gear in here. So I have a big Agnes tent. The whole tent setup is two and a half pounds, I think, or maybe just under two and a half pounds, including the stakes. But um, it's a great tent. I picked it up at Sierra Trading Post last year, the year before, for $150. So um, it's a good deal. So it's the one uh, pole system that you need is right here. And then I keep my stakes right here. And I have two other things in here. One is my trowel, and it is the, uh, the Deuce of Spades. And I've never used this yet. I picked this one up uh, late in the fall. They're kind of expensive. I had a gift card to REI, so I picked one of these up for 20 bucks. Kind of expensive, but really nice, really light. And I actually keep it in one of these... Um, uh, hammock strap bags because I just don't want it to cut anything. So I keep it in here for protection for the rest of my gear. And lastly in here is my puffy coat. And that fits in there perfectly. So and that's going to be part of my sleep system as well. And we'll do that on another video. I think that's all that's there. All right. So next up, we're going to go into the main part of the pack. The brain just opens up. It's got a drawstring, keeps it tight. So I pack this a little differently than what I would do in the summer. So typically in the summer, my sleeping bag is going to be at the bottom of the pack um, just because it doesn't, it doesn't fill out as much space. I actually do not put it in a compression sack. Usually I shove it down all the way in the bottom, let it fill all the cracks, and that tends to work really well. However, with my winter quilt, um, again, that I cannot wait to use, uh, putting it down there and compressing it with all my other gear, it, it bulges out against my back and it makes it really uncomfortable. So I'm actually using the compression sack from my other sleeping bag, my old winter bag, and I get this thing compressed down. And it can compress down a little bit more when I actually pull the string tight on the pack. But this is my UGQ um, 20 degree top quilt. I'll do a video on that once I use it in a couple weeks. I've got my clothes bag, and I do keep this in a dry sack. Again, this is going to be part of my sleep system, and I'll do that in a video as well. And then I get to my food. So some of the food items I actually have in the, their own bag, and I'll hang all of my food at night, actually in my big Agnes tent bag. But right now what this has, uh, it's got some nuts, some uh, peanut butter, cashew butters. Uh, we'll go through that in another video as well. 
but that is my snacks and my lunch are right here. Um, my dinner for Saturday night is lasagna. My breakfast for either Saturday or Sunday, it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in when I wake up on Saturday. I'll either do some of the uh, bars and nuts and butters that I brought, or I'll do the breakfast skillet, or I'll do half of the breakfast skillet and a bar and do that for Saturday and Sunday morning. But I keep that in here. Right now what I do, this is taking up more space than usual. I take my Mountain House meals out of these bags. I put them in Ziploc bags uh, because it takes up less space in my pack and it's a little easier to put in. Uh, but I don't do that until I leave for my trip because I like them sealed up. Um, so the other part of my cook system is this MSR pot. Um, these are kind of expensive. I want to say they're like 60 bucks, but they work great. Uh, it's got a lid that stays nice and tight. Uh, it's got a little rubber coating on there so you can grab it when it's hot. And in here is my whole cook system. I also keep some coffee in here for the morning. Uh, keep some little Parmesan cheese packets for my lasagna, so that's really nice. Uh, I've got my lighter to light my knockoff BRS stove. I actually love this thing. I've had zero issues with it. Uh, it works great. You do have to spin it onto your fuel can really fast, otherwise it will spit out a little bit, uh, some of the fuel. But I, I learned that after two or three times of doing it. This thing has worked great. I never need... Uh, anything except for boiling water. So for my coffee or for my mountain house meals. So for that, it does the trick. Uh, and then I keep my fuel can in here and I keep a little Brillo pad piece for doing my dishes. And then I do have some uh, fire starters in here uh, for lighting the fire at night or sometimes even in the morning if I don't feel like getting up and going right away. I use my mountain house meals right in here. So that's why I get rid of the mountain house bags because I just do it right in this pot and it works just fantastic. So I'm gonna pass these on here to my backpacking daughter. All right, so that is my food and my cook system. I talked about this in the video of new gear I'm taking on 2020. This is my microfiber towel. I just shoved that right in the middle of my pack. It works great. And then I get into my tent and I just shove it in here. I don't use the tent bag. Um, this is actually the mesh, the main part of the tent the footprint, things like air, it weighs nothing. And then the uh, the rain fly, which is really big. Again, it's like a big wind sail. Um, thankfully, it has been in some pretty heavy wind and the stakes stay in the ground really nice. So that's good. Um, in the water bladder portion of my pack, I have my new butt cushion, which will also be part of my sleep system. And I did actually do some research. This is a climate seat that I picked up at Sierra Trading Post. And I looked back and I think I got this thing for $7. So I can't wait to do a review on how that works. And then in here, I also have a climate um, sleeping pad. And I just fold this thing up uh, like so. And this slides right into where the water bladder would go because I don't use those typically when I go backpacking. So that's my winter gear loadout, not including the gear that I would have on me. Um, I'll do a video later on my clothing for the trip. I'll go into more detail on the food that I take for the trip. Um, so there was one other thing uh, that I do take with me that wasn't part of the pack, and that is I do carry two trekking poles with me, um, but those I never attach to my pack. I'm always carrying those with me, and that is actually part of the big Agnes tent setup. Uh, what I use is two uh, Kelty trekking poles for my backpacking trip, so one of them gets used to set up the tent, uh, and actually, no, they both do because one is required for the rain fly too. So those are a necessity that I do have with me when I backpack, um, but they never get attached to my pack. They're always with me on my person. So I hope you found this video informative and helpful and maybe gave you some ideas on what to include in your winter pack. I will post links to most of that gear down below in the description box. But hey, if you like talking about backpacking, if you like seeing what other people take on their trips, and you like talking about gear, please hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the like button as well. Uh, hit the notification bell so you can get notified every time I drop a video on the YouTube. Other than that, guys, keep on hiking. Take care.